what is the difference between the SDLC, SDLC and SDLC and SDLC. Okay. So in SDLC is nothing but the verification phases. You must have uh, heard about the verification and validation yesterday. And the SDLC is the validation phases. And I'm sorry guys, there is one uh, mistake here. SDLC is validation. Okay. And SDLC is verification. There is some typo error here. I'll get that corrected. Okay, so validation phases. Now, so wh what is that S S SDLC? And it is a verification phases. And what do we do in SDLC phases? It is nothing but the testing phases. And the tester who will be doing some testing in the SDLC. So all these things, all these things, especially system testing and integration testing, it is a part of the testers. So who will go do unit testing? Let me ask a question, please type. Who will do unit testing? Uh, uh, it, uh, the unit testing is done by the developers, okay. But it is a good to have skill to have a knowledge on testing. Uh, sorry, on knowledge on coding to do some unit testing. And now let me know who, who does the system testing and integration testing. Or the, these are the functional testers that would be uh, this system testing and integration would be carried out. So who is going to do the user acceptance testing? Okay, so the user acceptance testing will be trusted by the client or the business analyst who are being appointed by the customers. Understood? Sometimes Sahil uh, said it is also testers. Uh, not exactly because your testers job gets over with system testing and integration testing. But your tester can help the user or the business analyst to do some test, help them in, in testing because of the timelines or the stringent stringent timelines or the deadlines which they will not be able to meet okay but basically it is tested by the business analyst or the client and uh, now tell me one more uh, question so when is this user acceptance testing done is it before production or after production see after production there is no requirement uh, for uh, testing right after production is what everything is done and the system is moved and the application is moved okay so user acceptance testing it is a sign off from the client where they would give you a sign off saying yes even we have also tested the application can move to production assume if the production if you are doing user acceptance testing okay don't get confused with the word user user is nothing but the client okay you might be thinking the customer is if it is a banking software, you and I are the customer, we are not the bankers. Okay, so don't confuse with the terminology. Usually the user acceptance testing is done by the business analyst or the uh, users who are being appointed by the client or the, or, or the stakeholders. You understood? So this is done before the production. After production, it is not required. After production, it would be a showstopper where it would create a havoc that would bring a, bring a back reputation on the company brand. You understood? Yesterday I gave you one example as well. So project manager left me and gone. You remember? So that would create a bad remark on the product and the user as well. So ensure it is understand this user acceptance testing is done before the production. Okay. Thanks guys. You are a wonderful audience. I like your response. Okay. Now let me just explain what how is the process happening in the testing side. Now, so as we told you, the test plan is prepared based on the requirement analysis and the design, and then we prepare the test cases, okay, preparing the test cases or writing the test cases, and now creating test data. Now you may wonder, what is this creating test data? Now I'll tell you, let me take this example, okay. So when I write my test cases, I would say, you have given some expected result and actual result, correct? How did this expected result and actual result came up? Okay, so how did this come expected result? You may not be knowing. So what I'm what I will do when I write my test cases, I will say input data, I will say or input. I will have a column as an input data. I will say when I am trying to do when I write my test cases, I would say input data enter seven in a. Okay, and then in my next data, I would say enter 5 in B. You understood what is A and B, guys? A and B is nothing but this is the one, okay, whatever you are seeing on the top, okay. 
So I am saying enter 7 in A and enter 5 in B. So now tell me what would be the expected result from me. Expected result is what? 7 plus 5. Correct. 7 plus 5 is what? 12. So the expected result, what I am expecting is 12. And now, now comes your testing. So when it comes to your testing, now I will be writing actual actual result. So what is that actual result all about? When you will do, once when this application comes into your hand, then you will do your, then you will give the result what was the actual test. Now, based on the requirement specification, you have prepared your test case. Uh, this is what I am expecting. Now, application has come, come into your hand. Now, what is happening here? Okay, now I am saying, enter 7. What is the value? So, I have to enter 7 in A. And then, what is written here? Enter 5 in B. Okay, enter, I am, I am 5 in B. Now, enter. Now, what is the expected result? Is 12. What is the actual result I am getting? This 1.4. Are right, yeah, my test case is failed. What is the status? Status is failed. You understood? Okay, now, see, now the actual result is what? It is 14, which means, what had happened? The expected result is 12, actual result is 1.14, and what is the status of your test case? So what you, what you would say, is it pass or fail? Good. So the status is fail. What is now, how did you validate it? The, because the actual uh, result is not matching with the expected result and your status is fail. You understood? So now tell me what is that input data in the test case that you are preparing? Input data is nothing but the value that you have tend to give at the time of execution. On input data, input data is nothing but the value that you have determined to give at the time of your test case execution or whatever it is written. Okay. So now the create test data is done. But in real time, how do we connect to databases? See guys, you always understand uh, when you are doing this testing, there are different environments. Okay. So this testing that you are doing will be done in your testing environment. Okay. Your testing environment which will have a separate pack, meaning your testing environment will have a front end, the application that you are using, okay, and the database that you are connected, okay, and along with that, and the developer will have their own environment, which would be called as development environment, environment plus the application they are developing plus the database. Okay, so this databases will be in a separate environment. They will have separate server, everything. But for production, this understand, please understand, this databases are nowhere related or connected to the production server. Because what will happen if you guys are trying to do some testing and if they are connected to production server, then it will be a big flop. For example, let me tell you, and you are trying to do some testing on the um, account deposit, okay, for one particular customer. Let's say that customer is having a balance of around $300, okay. So during the time of testing, if you uh, enter some value of around dollar three lakh, what what do you what will happen if the database is connected to uh, this one? Your testing environment database is connected to the production then the customer will immediately withdraw the 3 lakhs of dollars and you will run away. You understood what I am saying. So, this testing environment database will be within the limits only for the testing environment, only for the testing purposes or it will be a dummy database. It will not be nowhere connected to the production environment. So, here you can give any kind of values for your test data and you can you will also have the rights to delete insert modify anything in the testing environment see what we have identified okay if we get any text as output okay let me just say um, this is called uh, a defect okay what is a defect actually see my expected output was this 12 but the actual result was something else 
because and this is a defect so what is a defect all about it is an external behavior or it's an internal um, uh, the the requirement was not it is it, it has got a deviation from the requirement now as a tester simply you can't go and tell them one point I, I gave some a uh, 12 uh, yeah simply you can't go and tell the developer saying I gave 7 and 5 and the result came it as 1.4 you should also try to do some analysis saying why that 1.4 has come okay so that's the smart work from the tester so then you can do some calculation take a calculator why it has come as 1.5 so okay so it is because I have there is a division that is happening it has come as 1.4 now you tell me is this a defect or a failure failure is what failure is nothing but there is a problem in the system or there is a problem where the application itself has got a, a connectivity issue like to the databases okay or the module is not working properly which means the, as soon as you click on uh, the, mo uh, the the application may not log in or it may not pop in it may not get you into the screen itself that you can call it as a failure you understood uh, and defect is nothing but a deviation from the requirement so what is the requirement my requirement is it should add the value but rather what is the deviation which is happening here it is dividing so now we saw the test data executed result the test we saw so we executed the result analyze the result what is that analyzing the result now is the analyzing the result so my I was analyzing my result so what it was giving it is not it is having a deviation my expected result was 12 but actual result is 4 now I'm analyzing and came to a conclusion instead of summing up it is it is dividing so this is an error you understood so that's what is happening okay that is the analyzing the result. So what you should do now, once when the when the result is failed or the status is failed, what is that you as a tester you should do? Okay, what is that as an anal uh, tester you should do? You have to. We have to log the defect. Correct. So Raji is saying we should log the defect. We have to log the defect. Well, how do you log the defect? Simply, it is not just going and to the developers bay and saying boss I have found a thing you, you have done a mistake please rectify it's not that going and doing a verbal communication they'll go get irritated so now we have some process that are there in the companies uh, and yesterday I told you about there are certain tools where you can raise defects in a tool called quality center we call it as QC and you have defects like uh, tools like Quintana okay uh, Quintana when I, I was using this application and I was in US working for some time okay and I didn't see that application anywhere and then now there is something called Jira, Jira and these are all the defect logging tools okay using some defect tr tracking tools so or some companies if they are not able to afford to buy all those tools they go for Excel okay and they'll put it in a shared basis or they'll send out a mail okay so you will then raise a defect and say this is what the result I got please rectify and send it to me I'll I'll teach you about how to log a defect when we come to defect management okay so once when the defect is done do you think the everything is done no uh, the job is not at over still what 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 you need to do you have to follow up with the developer until the defect is fixed and you have to once when the defect is fixed you have to get the uh, application back you have to retest the defect and ensure there is no problem or there is no failure or defect which is arising again okay once when you are through and when you are happy with the result then you can move it to the production you understood so this is the process which most of the companies follow today so in short let me summarize this so how are we doing planning and control that is a requirement and then we are preparing a test plan analysis and designing and then we are executing and during the execution anything the defect uh, that arises defects that we'll have to refix it and then exit criteria is nothing but the reporting test closure reporter before uh, before the sign off that we'll have to prepare how many test cases you have developed how many have been executed how many defects have been closed how many are still open how many defects will be resolved for the next release all those reports you have to clearly mention and prepare a report 
and then you have to give a sign off from your testing activity. You understood? These are the testing activities that we will be doing. 